Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my honourable colleague for Mississauga Lakeshore for bringing this incredibly important bill to this House. And uh, I, I had the privilege of, of sitting on the Status of Women Committee when the bill came before our committee. I want to thank our colleagues on the committee who, uh, who worked hard on this as well. And I think that when we talk about a Gender Equality Week, what we're really talking about is bringing people together across the country, whether it's civil society, parliamentarians, researchers, other groups, to be able to multiply the conversations, to be able to start a real engagement on gender equality in Canada. And we know, we know from many, many studies that women and men in Canada are not equal today. We can see it here in this House. 27% women are elected to this House. We see it in other kinds of leadership bodies, on corporate boards. And I'm very, very pleased at what our government is doing, for instance, in Bill C-25, about women in corporate boards to make sure that companies have a comply or explain model, so they have to have diversity policies. I'm particularly pleased at what the Minister of Science has done in the past week regarding women in research, that universities that don't have a diversity policy within the next Next two years and reach their targets will no longer get Canadian research, federal government research funding for Canada research chairs. And I think this is the kind of thing we've tried many other ways, and this is the kind of thing that is needed because we have not seen significant increases in gender equality in Canada in several decades in many different fields. And we in the Status of Women Committee right now are studying women's economic security. We've had a number of different groups come to us, and we know that women in Canada today are not making the same amount of money for the same kind of work as men. I chaired the Committee on Pay Equity, and we came out with a very proactive report which calls for pro proactive pay equity legislation that recognizes that pay equity is a human right. And I'm very proud that our government has responded positively to our report and is going to be bringing in pay equity legislation. This is the, the kind of thing that will help in terms of people who are working in similar fields. But we also know that the wage gap includes a number of different factors that aren't necessarily just about pay equity. For instance, uh, the, the precarious work. There are more women working in minimum wage jobs. There are more women who are working in part-time jobs. Today, we heard in the Status of Women Committee that in the bottom seven decibels, so the up zero to $70,000, um, there are more women earning that amount. And as soon as you get over 70000 there are more men. So it's clear that we have a long way to go. And particularly when it comes to women in the STEM professions. When it comes to the jobs that pay good money, when it comes to the kinds of good jobs that create Canadian prosperity, women are not choosing those jobs. Women, either because of socialization, because of lack of role models, uh, there are a number of things that we need to do to be able to improve the situation for some of the young women in our, in our communities. And I'm very proud that I had the opportunity in my riding of Ottawa West Nepean to meet with several girls and projects that are allowing girls to fulfill their full potential. Projects like Girls World from the Pinecrest Queensway Community Health Centre or the Girl Guides uh, who I met with and it was quite inspiring because when I met with these young girls they were so articulate. They, they believed that they could be anything and do anything. And this is something that we need to make not just an aspiration for these young women, but an actual reality. In fact, one of the young women, uh, later on, one of the young girls, I think 12 years old, wrote to me and asked if I could create a junior youth council because apparently when she's playing with her dolls at home, she actually plays, the dolls are doing parliament. And to me, this is the kind of thing. When a young girl of 12 years old is, is dreaming of, of being in government, being a member of parliament, at what point do you lose that, that aspiration? At what point does that young girl think, well, that's not something that's for me? Because we still don't see as many women winning nominations and winning election to this place as, as we ought to. And I'll just give an example in my own case, where when I was in grade 10, I joined the science club and I decided I wanted to be an astrophysicist. I did an entire report on how to become an astrophysicist. I signed up for calculus and all of the science courses. And somehow between grade 10 and grade 12, I lost my interest in science. In fact, math was my highest mark, but I was telling people at that point, I hate math, I'm terrible at math. And it's something that I continue to repeat over and over for decades. Oh, I'm terrible at math. 
And then I saw my report card, and I had 93% in my grade 12 math. So somewhere along the way, young girls are socialized that it's somehow not, um, not science is not something that you, that you want to do. And I'm very pleased having gone into history and now being in politics, but I think that what we need is to create a world where young girls and young women have the same opportunities, the same kinds of, uh, the, the barriers are no longer there so that they would be able to achieve the kinds of things that when you're 12 years old you dream of, and that somehow along the way we, we see that inequality coming in. And when I talk to young students that come here and I tell them that, young, that men make a dollar for every 73 cents that a woman makes, they gasp. They look at me and they say, how is that fair? Even young children know that that isn't fair. And so I thank my honorable colleague for bringing this incredibly important bill before the House. And I hope that it will get support across all the party lines because this is an opportunity for us to really make sure we're doing something about the gender gap in Canada. Thank you.